is the second stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger from Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Hey, folks. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. 
At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS Studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Conservative Commando's radio show. I'm Anna Little, co-hosting today with the one and only Sharon Engel. And, of course, we are coming to you live from Conservative Commando's radio network studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMFM 24-7. Those are all dot-coms. And, of course, if you would like to hear a rebroadcast, you can check out our website, CCRS Network, and CCRShow.com. At noon, you can log on to RoarRadio.net. And at 11 p.m., HighPlainsDailyNews.com. And as producer Rick Trader says, we are everywhere. You can also listen to conservative commandos by telephone at 832-999-1199. As I said, I'm Anna Little, and I would like to introduce to you listeners, Sharon Engel. Welcome to Conservative Commandos. Thank you so much, Anna. It's always so much fun to be here with you on Fabulous Friday. And this is an interesting Friday, the last Friday of 2016. We are going to really jump into 2017 on Monday. And uh, we've got about 20 days left before we have a new presidency, and things are wild out there, Anna. It's just wild watching what uh, Obama is doing in the last few days, and that's really what it is, the last few days of his presidency. I have never in my life ever seen such a disrespect for We the People before. We the People spoke just uh, November the 8th, not very long ago. And this president, on his way out the door, is disregarding the voice of we the people yet again and doing the most extreme stuff. I, I wonder, I wonder in my mind whether or not this man is trying to cause a world war on the way out the door. Uh, what are your thoughts, Sharon? I, I think, you know, I, I'm no psychologist, but I've heard many people over the last eight years expound upon his narcissism. And I think when you deal with that kind of a personality, they really aren't thinking about anything but themselves and their Oof. legacy and what they can do and how it will affect them. So it's all about Barack Obama. He really doesn't, I, I don't think he ever 
really thought about we the people. I don't think he ever really thought about what it means to be an American and part of the American culture. I don't think he ever really thought about the influence that America has on the rest of the world and how everything we do in this country really does have an an outgoing impact on everything in the world and how that is a, a really ten, tenuous, if not a tremulous, uh, position to be in as the most powerful man in the world. I don't think that he ever thought of any of those things except I'm the most powerful man in the world, look at me. I think that's exactly what we're looking at here. And he's he's got 20 more days left to be the most powerful man in the world, and he's going to do it, by golly. And we're just going to watch him strut his stuff. And that's really what I see is this man is strutting his stuff. I Because I can, I will, is, is his whole attitude. And I, here in the West, we were, we're flabbergasted, of course, every time they mess with what we know to be public lands, which means they belong to we the people. Now, the government has become more and more intrusive upon the... Uh, rights and ownerships of we the people and so we feel their regulation tightening more and more as they begin to tell us that we can't use the land and that's exactly what all of this um, setting aside for national monuments or wilderness it just says you the people no longer own this land it is set aside for a specific purpose and and you can't just use it any old way you please anymore. And it's interesting to me that uh, that it was Utah and Nevada. Nevada, of course, has the most public lands of any of the states of the Union. And most interesting was Harry Reid's response, which was, oh, thank you, thank you for giving us another um, uh, national Monument in Nevada, but really underlying all that, if you look at where that National Monument is, it's in Clive and Bundy's allotment, which was the uh, land that he had leased to run his cattle on, and after this big blow-up that we've had a few years back, um, Obama did a favor for Reed, saying, you won't ever have to worry about Clive and Bundy on the public lands again. So... <laughs> It's, it's this whole, oh, my word. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my We're just word. breathing out here. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's happening again. And, and of course, Harry Reid has used the public lands over and over and over again over the last 36 years to uh, line his own pockets, to do favor, favors for friends. Um, in fact, he actually uh, got uh, the water rights changed uh, the water rights laws changed in in washington dc this is get this anna we had a law in the state of nevada saying you can't take water across county lines now the reason we did that is because we have this huge giant las vegas that needs water and they would like to truck that water from everywhere else, I mean, including any place in the state that they can get it. So we fenced it off and said, no, you can't go across the county line and get somebody else's water. Harry Reid took that all the way to Washington, D.C., and superseded our law saying, oh, yes, you can. You can take the water across county lines. In fact, he got the buy-in from every one of our delegation members, even the Republicans. And because of that, he was able then to get some water for his good friend, Harvey Whittemore, who has a development in Clark County but needed the water out of Lincoln County. And then he said, gosh, Harry, I need a power, plan, a power line move. So Harry got that, redesignated uh, wilderness area and got a power line move for him. Everything's going great until Harry says, now you need to pay up. I need... Uh, some money for my campaign coffers in 2010 and harvey did it and guess what he got caught he got caught and went to wow. prison over the deal so, I mean, why didn't harry reed go to federal thing. prison over this well because 
Harry Reid, the, the, even though you can follow the breadcrumbs, there is no, it's, it's very difficult to really nail this guy down on this corruption. It's, it's easy to see it, Anna. And in fact, the LA Times did a big story on this corruption in Milandrep. But, um, we have to understand that people in Washington, D.C. have a certain immunity from the law, our president included, and we've watched this happen over and over again with Hillary Clinton. And Harry Reid, uh, you know, it, we, we know that it was orders from his office that coerced voters in 2010, but we could never even get our day in court over that. They would never even give us standing to bring our lawsuits, which we had it all prepared, but... We, uh, the attorney general at the time for political reasons wouldn't even bring it into court so when we start to go against these folks in court it's really a difficult uphill climb and i think we all have to just understand that there's a certain amount of immunity and i'm not sure what we do about that except making sure that we elect people with integrity that, it, you know, regardless of their immunity, they're going to do the right thing. Yeah, I can't agree with you more on that. It is so very important that we become informed about the candidates running for office and that we promote and work for the honest and, it, and candidates with integrity, as you've said, um, so that we don't have problems like this Harry Reid situation with his corruption. But with that, I think we'd better take us to a break, and I will do that for us. Uh, listeners, we are coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7. Those are all dot com. I'm Anna Little, co-hosting today with the one and only Sharon Engel. We'll be right back with you after this break. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Manier. We help co-host on the Concerted Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. You are listening to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Welcome back. We want to tell you how you can get a rebroadcast 
today's show, you can check on our website, ccrsnetwork.com or ccrshow.com. At noontime, you can log on to roarradio.net. And at 11 p.m., you can log on to highplainsdailynews.com. And now you can also listen to conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. I'm Sharon Angle, co-hosting today with my fearless leader on Fabulous Fridays and a little. Our, our uh, leader, Rick Trader, has really put a lot of trust in the two of us, Anna, and it's a, a deep honor and pleasure to be able to co-host on Fridays with you and, of course, with Silent John Forsyth, Forsyth in our uh, studios. We will have some great guests coming up at 335. We're going to have Chuck Tattlebaum, who is focusing his practice on bankruptcy and creditors' rights issues, uh, complex business litigation, and uniform commercial code transactions. And he is going to talk to us today about how the Grinch stole Christmas for retailers and casual dining restaurants, the top bankruptcies in the U.S. And that's that's kind of a sad note. And I um, <laughs> I thought we were doing great. It seemed like it seems like the stock market is is making a rebound, and that there's a lot of hope and optimism as far as the country goes but this is not exactly optimistic so we'll be we'll be interested to see what chuck tattlebaum has to say about the grinch stealing christmas for our retailers and casual dining restaurants who do you have coming up at 405 well i'm going to have the honor of introducing kevin mooney at 405 now he's an investigative reporter for the daily signal and he's a journalist uh, who writes for several national and state-based publications. His home state is my state, New Jersey, but he also has several adopted states, and he lives and works mostly in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's going to join us today. He's going to talk to us about the California gathering that hatched the plan to prosecute skeptics of climate change. Now, if you want to talk about tyranny, Sharon, we have, we have got a good example in this California gathering that was prosecuting skeptics of climate change. You know, it seems to me that this climate change, if when you debunk it, was based on lies to begin with. And while the climate may be changing, the rhetoric around the changing of the climate by man's doing has not been based in good science. And the fact that they, this California group would prosecute skeptics about something that has been proven already to have been based on misstatements, if not out-and-out lies, is just an example of tyranny, as far as I'm concerned. And where else to house that but in liberal land, California, out near you. So, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to speak with Kevin Mooney about what he's discovered. You're so right, Anna. And when you say out near me, uh, we feel it. We feel the pressure on our western border. I'll tell you, uh, we... We know that legislation from California used to take 10 years to get to Nevada, but more and more, if it's just one legislative session. So we're always on the lookout uh, for what's coming across that line at us. Our third guest at 435 is Tom Rogan, who's a contributor for Opportunity Live, a panelist on the McLaughlin Group and a senior fellow at the Steamboat Institute. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in War Studies from King's College London and a Master of Science in Middle East Politics from the School of Oriental and African Studies. And Tom's going to talk to us about an article he wrote, How Trump Can Stop Erdogan from Playing the United States. It's about time the White House got tough with Turkey's authoritarian leader. Uh, I didn't know that Turkey's president's name was Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and I hope I'm I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about: is this tyrant and how Obama has uh, kind of opened the door for him, shown him our weaknesses, and now Trump's going to have to stop this fellow from um, playing those Obama cards on us coming into this next. Uh, presidency. So we've got a good lineup here, Anna, and 
I'm excited to hear what Obama's done that that certainly um, affects you there at, in the East. I told you about our Western drama. Talk about some of the things that you've seen Obama doing in these last uh, death grips of his presidency. Well, I would say that this U.N. action, in, in which affected Israel, has really affected us up here in the Northeast. You know the U.N. has its uh, real estate in New York City, and there are many of us, you know, we're, we're interesting here in New Jersey. We seem to keep electing at the state level all these liberals into our legislature, but when you go door to door, the families are redneck, we are, we are grassroots, we are conservatives, um, and yet we submit to this liberal leadership. Well, we're outraged with what has gone on with Israel, and this crosses party lines, Sharon. This is not something that is specific to Republicans or conservatives, because there are supporters of Israel in both parties out here in the East. And I've got to tell you, there is more support for withdrawing funding and kicking the U.N. out of this country than I've ever seen before. And I think what we should be doing to try to support Donald Trump as he takes the oath of office later next month we ought to be getting some pressure on the uh, members of the Senate and the members of the House of Representatives to get them to go on record as to where they are with regard to this issue. And we the people, we know we can do that if we decide we're going to. So I think we should do that to give our president-elect, as he takes the oath of office next month, the proper support to do what he decides to do relative to this action against Israel. And I just want to remind everyone that Israel is the only democracy in the region and that ISIS comes right up to its borders and that this action by the UN was really, uh, as um, Benjamin Netanyahu would say, um, it was really instigated by the United States because we have always rejected it. And the fact that the timing of the vote was after the election and the, the United States chose not to reject it, it has now become a force of law. But the U.N. is a toothless tiger if she can't operate, and she operates with U.S. dollars. And those will be in the control of conservatives and Republicans for all three branches of government come January 20th. So I think this is an important issue for the East Coast, but also for the entire world. And I think we need to to stand up for Israel, especially at this time when we've got ISIS out of control and ISIS is being protected by these Arab groups that are at, they're anti-Israeli and they're anti-American. Well, you're so right, Anna, and it's a good place to start on the national debt. We're always hearing, oh, we don't know where to cut. We, we just don't know what we should cut. How can we save money? Well, you've just outlined it. Let's just defund the U.N. That's a good place to start. And it really is in our best national interest. I, I was interested to see a little too little too late for Obama that he's now willing to kick out uh, some of the em embassy workers the Russians have here because they tinkered with our election. And I, I thought, you know, we've always known that these um, embassies were just a uh, hotbed for uh, international uh, intrigue. And so we, we really have housed within our borders an entity that really doesn't have our best interests at heart and allows people to come into our country who uh, undermine uh, the very footings of our democracy. So, you know, you're exactly right. This is just the last straw and perhaps it is uh, with thanksgiving that we should say thank you president obama for raising the awareness of this issue to such a height that we may be able now to get rid of an agency that has never lived up to its potential and has actually become a thorn in our side so many ways and this one just uh tops it all off the way that they've treated Israel. And as you said, uh, all, there are so many of us in this country that understand the importance of our support for Israel and not just a, a lip service, but true support. We, we need to be their best and greatest ally in this world. And with that, we've got to go to another break because time flies. So I'll take us to that break. 
We are, you are listening to Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, and we are coming to you live from that flagship station of ours in Philadelphia, WNJC 1360, and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AM FM 24-7. And a little thing with Karen Angle. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com. And make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Minear. We help co-host on the Concerted Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS for automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every week day from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around 
around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back, listeners. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show with... Uh, yours truly, Sharon Angle, and Anna Little. You can uh, tune in to our website, ccrsnetwork.com or ccrshow.com, or at noontime, you can log on to roarradio.net, or at 11 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com, and now you can even listen to conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. And, Annie, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce our first guest, Chuck Tattlebaum, who focuses his practice on bankruptcy and creditors' rights issues, complex business litigation, uniform commercial code transactions, and lender liability litigation, and other types of secure transactions, as well as domestic and international letters of credit. Chuck, welcome to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. It's a real pleasure to be with you. Well, it's our pleasure to have you on, and and we're going to talk about how the Grinch stole Christmas from retailers and casual dining rep, restaurants. I thought we were in good shape. You know, after the election results, it looked like the stock market was turned up. Everybody's optimistic. What's going on, Chuck, that um, our retailers and casual dining restaurants are having so much trouble? Well, I think one thing is the stock market isn't necessarily a measure of what's happening in the consumer end. What what has really happened, and it's not really the function of the economy so much, is that there's just been a way overbuilding of strip malls and shopping malls, and they use the philosophy from the field of dreams that if you build it, they'll come. And so we have way more malls and, and brick-and-mortar stores selling exactly the same thing in malls, and shopping habits have changed. People don't want to go to the mall and stroll through and see five athletic shoe stores. They want to be entertained. So the malls that are really doing well, and the retailers there, are the ones where they have ice skating rinks and upscale dining and concerts. And the older malls, especially where the neighborhoods have changed, the stores are really falling down. And what we've had in the last quarter of 2016 with Sports Authority and Aeropostale, and just this week the Limited said they're going to file bankruptcy and close their stores, we're just seeing a real bad problem with retailing. Wow. Well, I, I was reading 2016 saw a surge in retail bankruptcy filings, most of which were blamed upon shifts of customer spending. And some of those that filed bankruptcy were... And, and you name a bunch. Backwoods Retail named some of them. Yes, and um, one of the reasons is they just way overbuilt. Uh, they expected that the sales would continue. Clearly, the Internet is hurting some of them with Amazon, but a lot of the brick-and-mortar stores have gone to their own websites and they're giving free shipping. So while it may hurt their brick-and-mortar stores, their overall sales aren't hurting. But the other thing is, I think you noticed before the Christmas 
uh, actually from Thanksgiving on, there was just huge discounting, huge price cutting at, in order to get the sales in the door. But then the margins were too low, and all of these retailers are not going to do well enough at the end of the year in order to catch up from the rest of the year. Well, you know, you said that the limited. Now, we have a couple of those stores here in Reno announced that it will be filing bankruptcy proceedings shortly after the new year. So, and and possibly close and just liquidate all of it, of course. That's, a, that's huge, isn't it? I mean, these, this is a national chain, and they're just going to be out the door after the first of the year. Um, well, and we... I, we have a situation where, for instance, Old Navy in SEC filings has said they're exploring alternatives. And although yesterday it was announced that Eddie Lampert, who's the the only stockholder of Sears, is borrowing another $100 million to put into Sears, Sears had a disastrous third quarter. Its sales are down. And there's a real prognostication that unless he keeps putting money in, Sears is going to go into bankruptcy and probably pull Kmart with it. Yeah, well, Kmart has been kind of on the ragged edge for a while, so this this might be just the, the last straw for them. Um, also, uh, significant franchises like McDonald's and Burger King and Long John Silver's. Now, I kind of understand the, the retail stores, but talk about, you know, I thought McDonald's was still number one in... What's the problem with them? Well, they're individual franchisees. Some of it has to do with location. But what the real problem is, is they're all pushing the value meal, which have a very low margin in there. So the, the franchisees and some of the stores that are owned by the companies, um, especially the franchisees, are forced to sell product at a very low profit margin you know, uh, in a number of states, they already have and they will starting next week, the minimum wage is going up so that the franchisees are no, re- no longer able to really make it. You know, it sounds like it's sort of the same thing that the retail stores are doing. They're, they're getting all these prices so low that they can't pay their employees, they can't even make make the business run in a in a brick and mortar situation like you said well i think the other thing with the casual dining which has happened and retailing people are very fiscally conservative today they're all waiting to see what's going to happen and people are not spending and they're not really spending for casual dining interestingly in the retail sector statistics came out in the fall that walmart shoppers the A whole group of Walmart shoppers nationwide have switched to dollar stores. And dollar stores are the fastest growing area in the retail environment. And what they're then having are Target customers downsizing or downgrading into the Walmart stores. So the whole demographic has changed as to who's shopping where and how little they're spending. Uh, I guess that we should be thankful that people are are being more conservative in their spending, but what does that do overall to our nation? Is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I think, I, I'm not going to say it's good or bad, but I think what's going to happen is just like what happened to a much greater degree with the housing boom in 2008 to 2010, we need a consolidation in retail. You need to have fewer stores and fewer malls. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a shakeout. The strong ones will still stay, will cut back and stay strong. And the ones that are very weak, they may even do that as well. Because one of the benefits of going into Chapter 11 is retailers can just walk away from leases. Now that dumps on the landlords and the rest of the tenants in the shopping center but it allows the retailers to close lost and unprofitable stores. Oh, this sounds like a real trickle-down effect, and I'd like to talk to you about that when we come back from our break. I have a co-host, Anna Little, and she wants to ask a few questions, too. Can you stay with us through the break for about two minutes? Sure can. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we are coming to you live from Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AM FM 24-7. We'll be right back after this quick break with our guest, Chuck Tattlebaum talking about how the Grinch stole Christmas from retailers and casual dining rest- restaurants. And with Anna Little, my co host, this is Sharon Angle, back in two minutes. <laughs> The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Manier. We help co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Angle and Anna Little. If you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, CCRS Network, and CCRShow.com, or at noon, RoarRadio.net, and at 11 p.m., HighPlainsDailyNews.com. And now you can listen to the conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. We are speaking this segment with Chuck Tatelbaum. He specializes in bankruptcy matters, and he's been talking to us about how the Grinch stole Christmas from retailers and from casual dining restaurants. Chuck, thank you so much for waiting through that break. We do appreciate your time. My real pleasure. Thank you. And, Chuck, I just want to make sure you realize that you're speaking with Anna a little because Sharon and I kind of sound alike. And I've been listening to your segment just prior to the break where you were speaking with Sharon just about this issue. And I've got a couple of questions, one of which is, do you think maybe the Obama administration's policies with regard to raising the minimum wage, Obamacare requirements on employers, does any of that affect these retailers or perhaps these casual dining restaurants in such a way that they may be in the position that they're in today because of those policies? I think I think I, I don't think the uh, because the health care system is something separate, but from the retail and the casual dining, I certainly think, and it's been demonstrated that raising the minimum wage is a factor because what happens is the uh, restaurateurs and the retailers can't raise the prices commensurate 
uh, with uh, the increase in the salaries. So unless they want to cut back on people, which doesn't help their sales, it is definitely having somewhat of a domino effect. Yeah, because, you know, these retailers and casual dining restaurants, while it is, they are affected by discretionary spending, and we know that we're still in a recession no matter how much uh, this administration would like us to believe we're recovered. We know better than that. Uh, we're trying to make the money in the monthly. And these, these retailers and, and these uh, casual dining restaurants, they are the part-time jobs and the, and the minimum wage type jobs. So, you know, I guess they would be the first to go. Am I right about that? Well, I think there it is a significant factor, but what the real problem is going to be is as these stores have closed and do close, you have people that become unemployed and who only know to work in the retail sector. And when the retail and the casual dining sector is shrinking, two things will happen. Uh, if there's not a minimum wage, the wages will go down. And also these people become unemployable because there's, there's just no jobs. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the whole um, online purchasing, and I know that's a big, big deal now. Technology has evolved. Our way of life has changed. We all live on our smartphones anymore. And a lot of our shopping is done in the course of doing everything else in the rest of our lives. If we can get it by using that smartphone and that Internet connection without having to interrupt the rest of our schedule in a day, we'll do it that way. And if Amazon or some other competitive company is willing to bring it to our doorstep, well, that's going to affect these retailers, and if we're not out walking from store to store, we're not popping into those casual dining restaurants either. Is there a way that these enterprises, these businesses could adapt to the way we're living our lives and still maybe survive as a business? Or are they a thing well, of the past now? I think there are two things that have been demonstrated during the last year. One is where the malls have really refurbished themselves, and I said earlier, done things like putting in entertainment venues like ice skating rinks or dine-in movie theaters or have concerts and the retailers are seeing a definite upswing of people who come to the malls because it come, becomes a destination and they'd rather go there and get service. The other thing that we've seen is that with a lot of the big box retailers the service level has dropped precipitously and people don't want to go there. In the retailers where they have good service People do want to stay, and they'll walk away from going to uh, the Internet sales. Okay. So what we're finding is that people do like to shop in stores, but when they're out for entertainment, and um, and I, maybe that's the way they have to adapt if they want to stay with us. You know, the, the private sector is where jobs are created, and I really um, I'm, I'm saddened to see that we're having such a, a difficult time. Uh, in that private sector right now. Do you have any words of wisdom for franchise owners that might be facing bankruptcy at this point and what they might be able to do to save themselves from that, since it is your area well, of expertise? What, what they should do is consult not only a good attorney who knows bankruptcy, but a good financial advisor, and come up with a plan as to what do they need to do to return to profitability. Don't go think about closing or going into bankruptcy before doing a plan. But most successful reorganizations in Chapter 11, I mean, people forget that 7-Eleven and Circle K were both in bankruptcy at one time, and they came up with plans that worked. I see. So bankruptcy doesn't always mean that a business is to put. It might be a way to reorganize and refocus the business so it can be successful. Is that what you're saying? That's right. I mean, just look at GM and Chrysler from a few years ago. And they reorganized, they changed, they got rid of some pension stuff. Even the city of Detroit did it with a lot of aggravation. But yes, it can be a reorganization. You consolidate and cut your losses and you stay in business and more importantly, keep the jobs. Well, I like that a whole lot better. That gives me a silver lining to this story and, and perhaps a little bit of hope that maybe there is a way for these businesses to use the bankruptcy process or or perhaps other tools at their disposal to um, make a go of it, to, to survive the changes they've had to weather and, and to stay alive as a business. Well, that's true. Unfortunately, a lot of business people who are great business people but don't understand what happens in this type of financial distress, they wait too long. And it's sort of like having a disease. 
you don't go to the doctor early enough, it can't be cured. People, business people need to go early to figure out what to do. So what you're recommending then to these uh, franchise owners and to any other business owner who's having a financial tough time is to get in touch with a knowledgeable attorney with an area of expertise in perhaps bankruptcy reorganization or other business tools that might exist so that they can perhaps weather the storm and, and keep themselves afloat. Is that right? Exactly right. Okay. And, and with that statement, would you please remind our listeners where they can get in touch with you and follow your work? Right. Um, the website for the firm is www.trip, T-R-I-P-P, Scott, as the O-T-T, dot com, all one word. And we have a up updated blog on all the things you need to know, wanted to know about bankruptcy. Terrific. And on that blog, are they able to get some of this preliminary information that might give them an idea what kind of questions to ask when they come to see you or another professional well, they can... that's closer to them? They can send an email, and we are happy to, as an accommodation, especially to your listener, uh, give some preliminary advice and suggestions. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Tell them again how they can get in touch with you, Chuck, because I like that last offer a whole lot. Yes, it's www.trip, T-R-I-P-P, as in Paul, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, dot com. Okay, well, we've got about five minutes left to the segment here, so I want to make sure that we covered everything that you wanted to when you came on this show. Now, you talked to us a lot about the factors that have been impacting these uh, retailers and these casual dining restaurants, and you've talked about, you know, what they can do to, pro to, to survive. Do you have any other general advice for those of us who are living in this economy, supposedly recovered, still struggling, we're, we're limping along? What advice do you have for us all? Well, I think what, what people need to do is as, learn the lessons from the recession where especially people went into debt and especially this time of year, it's very hard on the consumer end uh, not to get into too much credit card debt. Now that the Fed has raised interest again, what it means is if you have more than $10,000 on your credit card and you pay the minimum each month, it will take you roughly 40 years to pay it off, assuming you have no other charges. Uh, people don't realize that. They say, oh, $20 a month, that isn't too bad. Well, this is what we're seeing as to the rise in consumer bankruptcies because the easy credit on the credit cards. Well, yeah, that is an important point to make. The minimum payment really barely covers the interest on a credit card. So... I know better than that, but not everybody does. You know, sometimes they think if they can get by with those minimum payments, that that's a good thing and that they're deferring paying off the balance. But, you know, the interest rate is so high that you're just about keeping up with that interest with minimum payments, and sometimes they're slightly less depending upon how high that interest rate is. So it is important if we're going to be using credit cards at all that we do it in a healthy way. What advice can you give those of us who do use credit cards in our daily life? What should we be using as a, a plan or a rule of thumb for paying off that principal debt that we create when we use the card we max it out well of course try not to build up a lot of debt uh, but the other thing is in every community the united way has a credit counseling service and it's free and it's not one of these that you see on television but it's part of united way and if people see that they're floundering because of the credit card debt they can contact United Way, go to credit counseling service, and they'll work with them free to help them readjust their uh, credit card balances, negotiate with the lenders, and the lenders are very happy to work with them because they know it's part of United Way and working for everybody's benefit to get it resolved. Well, that's terrific advice. I've got to say, Chuck, you, you've been a very timely guest. We're here at the end of the year. People are thinking about the fact that they've got to pay taxes in April. The year is ending, and they're looking at their spending. So I think this has been very timely, and you're, you've got very sage advice. Remind our listeners once again how to get in touch with you. Yes, it's the website, www.trip, T-R-I-P-P, -P, Scott, all one word, dot com. Terrific. Chuck Tatelbaum, thank you so much for spending time with us today on Conservative Commandos Radio Show. You've Expertise. 
Oh, and to you too. Happy New Year 2017. And with that, listeners, I'm going to take us to a quick break. Um, you were, it, uh, it, we were coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMFM 24-7. Those are all dot com. I'm Anna Little, co-hosting today with Sharon Engel. We'll be right back with you after this break. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Minear. We help co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. 
We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back, listeners. Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Anna Little and Sharon Engel. If you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, CCRS Network, and CCRShow.com, or at noon, RoarRadio.net, or at 11 p.m., HighPlainsDailyNews.com. And now you can listen to the conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. I'm Anna Little, co-hosting today with the one and only Sharon Angle. And we are ready with our next guest, Kevin Mooney. Kevin Mooney is an investigative reporter for the Daily Signal. He's a journalist who writes for several national and state-based publications. His home state is my home state, New Jersey, but he has several adopted states and lives and works mostly in Washington, D.C. And he's joining us today to talk about a very important topic, the California gathering that has the plan to prosecute skeptics of climate change. Kevin, welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Oh, thanks so much for having me, and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, and and thank you so much for all the work that you do. But talk to me. What is going on in liberal land California over there? Well, there's this ongoing strategy to try to silence and muzzle scientific skeptics who are growing in number who question the premise of alarmist theories and question the idea that human activity is responsible for global warming, or now they call it climate change. So uh, this group of trial lawyers got together back in 2012 uh, in a San Diego neighborhood where they cooked up this strategy to try to use the federal racketeering law uh, to uh, prosecute uh, energy companies and individual scientists who don't toe the government's line on uh, environmental regulations and, and climate change. So it's really, when you think about it, it's an anti-free speech, um, anti-First Amendment uh, assault. And it's actually very unsettling and very dangerous, I think, if this, if this is allowed to continue. Well, it sure sounds like tyranny to me. And we fought a revolution to get away from that, you know, oh, a couple centuries ago. So it really oughtn't to be permitted. It's very un-American. But remind me, or correct me if I'm wrong, it wasn't climate change once called global warming. Didn't that name change because suddenly the, the globe really wasn't warming the way they thought it was. It was actually getting colder. And before that, weren't there scientists that jumped ship because the scientific supposed foundation for this movement was based in fact, it was based in lies? I mean, is my memory faulty? Well, here's the problem. I mean, you're right. There has been a shift from global warming to climate change. One reason for that is that we've gone almost 20 years now where temperatures have been flat and there were perhaps even declining. I mean, for the balance of our lifetime, there are some astronomers who feel, if anything, 
we're, being, we're going to be living on a planet that's getting slightly colder over the next 20, 30 years because of a less active sun. Uh, the point is, climate's very dynamic, very complex, um, and these reports of the United Nations have always greatly overstated the climate sensitivity to carbon dioxide, which is not a pollutant, it's a naturally occurring substance. Um, so there's a whole mix of factors that go into climate change, be it warming and cooling, and the human impact on climate is probably marginal at best. So I think what's happened is that, is that over time, the skeptical view has gained considerable momentum. You now have hundreds of scientists from across the globe who now point to natural influences as opposed to human activity um, as the primary driver of climate change. Uh, and of course, that sort of unsettles the whole premise of the Obama administration's regulatory agenda. So at the end of the day, this is really about somebody's policy agenda. It's also about trial lawyers trying to make themselves rich. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I think we're not necessarily against the study of cyclical changes in the climate or other stimulus which may contribute to changes in the climate. I think what the Obama administration has been trying to do is uh, use climate change to, shall we say, socially engineer or perhaps regulate or overregulate or dictate to the economics of um energy sources and and so therefore climate change has been a useful tool and apparently it, it's just not working out is, is that true yeah well when you think about it um one reason why i think the left seizes on the environment as part of a regulatory agenda is strictly speaking everything is included in the environment if you think about it so if you if you if you have a regulatory agenda there is a certain logic to trying to seize on the environment um as sort of your rationale for larger and more intrusive government. So it's really about a political agenda. Um, and I think that part, part of what happened, I think, during the Obama administration is that uh, scientific skeptics began to develop a bigger microphone, we begin to find expression. And I think the public is very attuned to the idea that there's something very off about this. So I think that the debate really has been reframed in a way that's more advantageous to climate skeptics, uh, which is why you see, you, you, I, I mean, essentially they're panicking a little bit because they know they only all have so much time left to try to install their regulatory agenda before Obama goes out of office. So this is really more about politics, less about climate per se. Yeah, I can see that. I truly can. And you mentioned the environment, and I've got to say, I am one of the most uh, most hardest right-wing conservatives, and yet I live in a Jersey Shore town, and I care very deeply about the uh, the environment. and. You know, I'm I'm neighbors to a bunch of redneck fishermen who would consider themselves conservatives, and yet they care very deeply about the environment because they make their livelihood from a healthy environment with loads of fish and other life forms supporting a, a very healthy ecosystem. So I think it is a, a misstatement based in politics that perhaps the leftist, um, the environment belongs to the left. I don't believe it does. I think what belongs to the left is big government and dictating what we do about the environment and manipulation of facts and manipulation of the climate change environmental movement as a tool. Do you want to speak to that in any way? Well, sure. No, I think you put your finger on something very important. You have to ask yourself, given all the money that has been invested in attacking carbon dioxide per se, what is the opportunity cost of all the time and effort that's been wasted on the fiction that really is man-made global warming versus doing something in the way of ecological improvements? I mean, as you say, the environment, as it's defined in the dictionary, is something that we all care about very deeply, I and mean, everybody wants to have clean water, clean air. But I think that the global warming alarmism has crowded out legitimate environmental initiatives, and hopefully we're moving back into a cycle where we can have a reasonable balance between uh, hard, sound science and public policy solutions that strike a balance between uh, necessary industrial activity and a clean environment. Yeah, you know, I think it's important to note that because... Um, as I said, I, I think there, there are misstatements among the liberal left on this topic. They seem to portray themselves as if they own it. Their ally is obviously uh, the mainstream media. Uh, I know we're moving away from mainstream media, creating our own mainstream with social media. But, um, you know, the idea is still out there that the left is for the environment, the right is for energy. Let's talk about energy a little bit. Um, the environmentalists and climate change, man-made climate change proponents would have us believe that fossil fuels are an enemy to the environment, and yet the uh, fossil fuel energy producers have said that they've made changes in the way that they produce their fossil fuel energies, and that the impact on the environment is much less. 
is there any truth to that in any of the information that you've come in contact with? Oh, sure. I mean, technology is improving all the time. Um, and I'm all for experimenting with so-called renewable energy. I mean, if somebody wants to give solar power a go or wind energy a go, I mean, that's fine to do it on their own dime. But the problem is they're very uh, unreliable, very intermittent, uh, intermittent um, and uh, they just don't work very well standing, standing alone. Our, our economy runs very well on fossil fuels. And I'll also say this. I think one of the most encouraging developments in the U.S. over the past uh, 10, 15 years has been the natural gas revolution. Um, so, I mean, if you care about uh, clean energy with reduced emissions, you should love natural gas. And yet the left is constantly trying to put the kibosh on any kind of natural gas development. But it says to me they just have sort of had the default position of being against fossil fuels, which to me is not rational or reasonable. Um, we need a mixed portfolio of energy. Um, uh, I don't think we should be reflexively hostile to nuclear energy in some areas. So I think it's, I think it's fine to sort of develop alternative energy sources. But uh, this means a lot of people's livelihood and living standards. Uh, you know, if you care about average people, fossil fuels have been one of the greatest anti-poverty initiatives of, of, the, of the generation. Fossil fuels raise living standards and lift people out of poverty. So they're not, they're not the enemy of humanity. Nobody, nobody says that you should drill any old which way. I mean, there has to be a procedure and a process. But I, I think that there's been this sort of reflexive mindset on the left to sh shut down all fossil fuels, which I don't think is going to be a reason well, you know, this has been a very interesting discussion, and I don't want to... Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMFM247. Those are all dot com. We are speaking this segment with Kevin Mooney. He'll be right back with us after this break. Sharon Angle, you're going to bring us back, and you're going to introduce them, and you're going to ask your questions. See you in a bit. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Minear. We help co-host on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome 
back with the Conservative Commandos radio show. Uh, you are listening to Sharon Angle, Anna Little, and our special guest today, Kevin Mooney from the Daily Signal, talking about climate change. And if you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Or at noon, you can log on to RoarRadio.net. At 11 p.m., log on to HighPlainsDailyNews.com. Now you can listen to Conservative Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Kevin Mooney, I have been so interested in hearing what you had to say with my co-host, Kevin Little. I mean, Anna Little. Here, I got you both together there. Anna Little, uh, during the first segment. And I, in reading your article, I guess what really tripped my trigger was the lawsuit aspect of this whole thing. It, it seems like all we have to do is follow the money. And they had this meeting in La Jolla and discussed the settlement that the tobacco industry got. And all of a sudden now we're equating that. Talk, talk about this. Is is it the money that's really the driving force behind this climate change and not so much the effect it's going to have on the environment? Well, yeah. I, I mean, to be blunt, I, this, to me, this is really about trial lawyers making themselves rich. And if, if you look at the emails that have been pulled out by Freedom of Information Act requests, lawyer requests, um, in related cases, uh, there's nothing in these internal messages about saving the planet, but there's a lot in there about, gee, how much can we shake down these companies for? And that's the really devilish part of this. Um, there are certainly challenges to humanity. The climate is very dynamic. It, it's always changing. Um, and I think there are going to there are, are be long-term challenges to humanity. We're going to be in a better position to handle those challenges if we're richer and wealthier. I mean, being anti-industrial or anti-technology is, to me, is a very backwards way of thinking. And also, I think there's good reason to think that, as you say, follow the money. Uh, this is not about the environment, per se. It's just a vehicle for bigger, more intrusive government and um, more, uh, I think, an abuse of power on the part of state attorney generals and, and government attorneys who are trying to silence people who differ with their views on climate. So there's a couple of moving parts here that I think we should be very concerned about. But I think the good news is that they're being exposed now in a way that they never had been before. Uh, and so I think that might be a little bit of good news going into 2017. Well, certainly your article does a long way to that exposure and it, you really do get down to the nitty gritties when you say it is all about the money and I'm, I'm glad that you're pointing that out because it just seems to be that, that corruption is almost a byword with this administration and that every trail leads to a trial lawyer's desk for money. Um, talk about, well, do you think they'll be successful with this, or, or how do you think this is all going to play out, or are we really going to court? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. I, I will say the, uh, it was back in March of this year that former Vice President Al Gore had a press conference with, oh, I think it was seven attorney, state attorney generals who gathered in New York, but it was part of a broader coalition uh, to start investigating and pursuing and harassing energy companies in the name of climate change. Uh, but that coalition has been gradually unraveling. Um, and also, uh, uh, House Republicans have also been subpoenaing documents from the state attorney generals to see how they're colluding with environmental organizations. You know, they're supposed to be looking out for the public interest. They're not, as government attorneys, you're not supposed to carry out the water for very well funded special interest groups. And that's clearly what's been happening here. So, I, yeah, I think the key word is exposure. Um, I think they, they know that they've been losing the argument. Um, they've been called out for an abuse of power uh, and abuse of prosecutorial discretion. Um, and also the science is not on their side. Um, one thing that you know, one of our sources really drives so many articles, but there really is no analogy between tobacco and climate. I mean, whereas there was a scientific link between tobacco use and cancer, um, a rising number of scientists now, hundreds of scientists from across the globe, uh, now point to natural influences as opposed to human activity as the primary driver of, uh, of climate change. So there really is no consensus. I mean, the science is always changing. Uh, it's worth careful study. But silencing and muzzling dissenting voices is no way to do science. Talk to us a little bit about the RICO 20. Well, that's the racketeering law. That was a law that the Fed set up to go after mobs and organize crime. Um, 
and, you know, for uh, conspiracy and collusion. Uh, so it's a law that has real teeth for it. Uh, I believe the law was passed in 1978 for the purpose of prosecuting mob crimes. Um, and the idea that you would now take that law and start going after uh, uh, scientists, um, uh, organizations, and, uh, and free market energy companies um, because they don't support the government's position on climate change and they don't support the Obama administration's regulatory agenda. I mean, to me, that's just a raw and naked assault on the First Amendment and free speech. Well, and, and it has to do with these 20 academics. Um, it's interesting that a third of them come from George Mason University, which is, isn't it in Washington, D.C.? And uh, talk, talk to us about these academics. What, what's in it for them? Are they going to benefit from the money that's going to flow from... Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's another follow of money. This? Think about this. They're, you're talking about George Mason is a public university, um, there's a group, we call them the RICO 20. It's a group of 20 academics from across the country who sent a letter to President Obama and his attorney general asking them to, to prosecute climate skeptics. And if you think about it, you know, we're paying their salary. If you're a Virginia resident, you're paying the salary of George Mason. If you're in Washington State, you have your public university. So we're all basically spending part of our day paying the salaries of academics who are going to go out and push policies that are going to raise our energy prices. I mean, that's what you call a lose-lose scenario. Yeah, it, it really I mean, is, and uh, I think it's the most irritating and aggravating of all things when we have to fight our own government over things that, oh, you know, less than 20% of the population even buy into it, seems like. It's, it's a crazy world that we're living in. Uh, do you see this? Flipping in any way, uh, are they going to just continue to pursue this, or are we going to have a new day? Uh, is Trump really going to make a difference here? Do you think it's going to go on business as usual? No, I think there's reason to be encouraged by, by some of his appoint, appointments. Um, you know, if you hear, you know, the, the uh, critics of the Trump administration, they'll say, hey, wait a minute, he's putting people in charge of agencies that have been battling these agencies. And I say exactly right. Uh, the Oklahoma Attorney General, who's been nominated as the new EPA chief, was the one representing his constituents against uh, EPA overreach and abusive regulatory uh, policy. So I think the fact that you have people, you know, from outside of Washington, D.C., who are now being put in positions of authority, I think is, is cause for encouragement. But I think, it, I think rolling back these regulations is a very achievable goal. And I think that could be one of the big stories coming out of 2017, to sort of get the regulatory administrative uh, stay back inside of the box um, so, and to get their boot off the neck of average people who depend on fossil fuels for a living in that area. I mean, you know, you've, you've basically you're ruined and shut down of lives in the coal industry across the country, which to me is, you know, gets into, uh, I think, some pretty serious moral questions. I know many of us feel that there, these agencies really have no constitutional right to exist at the federal level, such as the EPA. And isn't the EPA one of the main uh, problems that we have? Do you, do you have someone that you would like to recommend to President Trump as the, the person that might take over the EPA? Or do you have a recommendation on where, how you think the EPA should go? be um, administrated going forward. Let's talk just a little bit there. Yeah, well, actually, I, I think that he's made good selections so far. I think his nominee for the EPA, the, Mr. Pruitt, the Oklahoma Attorney General, is an excellent choice. Um, I think the concern is, and I don't have a perfect answer to this, but you do have careerists, career bureaucrats inside of these agencies who are certainly who do not have to stand before the voters and who have not have been accountable to Congress. And that's going to be an interesting battle to see how this new team can score off against sort of these entrenched, um, you know, career bureaucrats who have been pushing these regulations. So that's the real battle to watch. But I, I do, I do think, um, you know, as to the Trump administration, uh, there is a real chance that we, we can have regulatory reform that will make a real difference in people, in people's lives. So I, I do say that as an achievable goal. Um, you know, let's. You know, the irony here is that the EPA was actually put in by a Republican president, Richard Nixon, back in back in the seventies. Um, so it, it, it's it, it, it is an agency that I think can be brought to heel. Uh, what I'd like to see happen is is more devolution outside of Washington D.C. back to the states, where the local 
uh, versions of an EPA uh, are, are much more reasonable and much more balanced in their approach to regulation. So uh, if, you, if, you, if we can pull back the regulations now, then yes, I think we have a chance of getting the EPA back inside of a constitutional box. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, Kevin, tell us how we can follow you there at the Daily Signal and, and just watch for more articles and even read this one that you've done. Uh, well, yeah, um, you know, um, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Kevin Mooney, D.C., and you could read me on the Daily Signal. That's, that's where we, I'm doing most of my work, and I write it for a few other publications as well, so I'm pretty easy to find, to find online. Um, just go to the Daily Signal, look under my name, and, and you'll see all the latest reports there. And um, I have another report coming out next week about the, uh, since I'm from New Jersey, about the Battle of Princeton since it's the 240th anniversary. So kind of a change of topic, but I think that will be interesting. Thank you so much, Kevin Mooney, for being our guest here on Conservative Commandos Radio Show. We really appreciate the time that you've spent with us today. Oh, well, thanks very much for having me. I'm glad to be on. <laughs> Thank you. And we're coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting Talk Stream Live. SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AM FM 24-7. I'm a little, and I, Sharon Angle, will be right back after this break with our final guest, Tom Rogan, who's going to be talking about Iran. I really this is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Minear. We help co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration. And that's Philadelphia Control Systems. 
In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems program, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at wnjcradio.com check out our website conservative commandos radio network.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates we are the conservative commandos radio network where even more newsmakers go to be heard From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back, listeners. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Anna Little and Sharon Angle. And if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. At noontime, you can also log on to roarradio.net and 11 p.m. Log on to highplainsdailynews.com. And now you can listen to conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce our guest, Tom Rogan, who's a contributor for Opportunity Live, a panelist on the McLaughlin Group and a senior fellow at the Steamboat Institute. He holds a BA in War Studies from King's College London and an MSc, a Master's in Science in Middle East Politics from the School of Oriental and African Studies. Tom Rogan, welcome to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's our pleasure, Tom. And we, I'm really interested in your article, How Trump Can Stop Erdogan from Playing the United States. It's about time the White House got tough with Turkey's authoritarian leader. Now, I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing that name right. So could you tell us what the president of Turkey's name is? Uh, yeah, his name is uh, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, but, you know, Erdogan, basically. Erdogan. Okay, got it. It's got that G in there, and that throws my English off. Talk to us a little bit about this guy. He sounds like he's uh, he's really got uh, visions of grandeur over there in Turkey. What What's his story? Well, he, he entered power on behalf of the um, AKP, which is, I mean, his political party. Um, he's been in power for a long time. In the early 2000s, um, before he was president, he was a prime minister because the prime minister in Turkey used to have most of the power. Uh, he actually did a pretty good job. He built up the economy. He improved the education system. Uh, but in the last few years, uh, and really in the last two years, he has steadily built up uh, the power of the center, which is to say power around himself as this kind of um, you know, more dictatorial power, 
uh, and he's pursued a uh, political Islamic uh, sort of strategy in the sense of trying to empower uh, Islam uh, as a political structure beyond empowering uh, the civic needs of his population. Uh, and the difficulty is that now he is playing uh, as a pawn for Vladimir Putin. And so that's the theme of my piece. Now, this this shift over to Vladimir Putin, it, it's generally believed, at least I believe, that, that Turkey was an ally of the United States and and that we could kind of count on them to be our supporters at the UN, those kinds of things where we need allies. But now with this shift, is this uh, due to Obama? Why did he do that? Why is Turkey now moving away from the United States, and are they still our ally? I mean, they're still our ally. My argument is that they're declining in the amount they're our ally. I think the main reason they moved away is that they saw the United States had no vested interest in leading in Syria, which is to say doing what the Turks originally wanted, to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, the dictator of Syria, and to support uh, more strongly the Sunni rebellion against Assad, where they saw President Obama refusing to do that, and then the Russians taking much more of an asserted uh, control over what was happening in Syria. Uh, I think the Turks essentially buckled under pressure from Putin. They're scared of him. Uh, they think President Obama's weak. And so Russia, that push and pull factor, um, put Erdogan in a position where he decided to go with uh, President Putin. So it's not so much that he thinks he's so great, it's just that he thinks that we're a little squishy on this side of the pond and, and that uh, Putin is a lot closer and more dangerous to him. Is that kind of how you read the situation? Yeah, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. And, and again, you know, he doesn't think the United States will push back against him uh, for jumping into Putin's corner. Um, and so, yes, I mean, I think, I think you're right on that. So now tell me, we've got, uh, we've got a change now. We are, we're not in Obama land any longer, at least after the next 20 days. We're, we're, there's a new, uh, guy on the block here. Um, how can Trump change Turkey's perception when Erdogan back? What what does Trump need to do in order to solidify Turkey as an ally again? Well, I outlined a number of factors. The first one, I think, uh, is that he needs to um, show Erdogan that when he says something, he means it. President Obama has very little credibility. Um, but Trump, uh, for, for a number of examples, he could provide greater support to Kurdish political elements in northern Syria and Iraq, which would upset the Turks, and he can do that in a way which is to say to the Turks, listen, unless you back away from Putin, we're going to do what you don't like, which is to say provide more support to the Kurds. That would put pressure on Erdogan. Uh, he could also use his stronger relationships with the Sunni Arab monarchies, which is states like Saudi Arabia, um, and he's going to have strong relations with them because he's going to crack down on the Iran deal, which those uh, you know Sunni monarchies hate because it's you know it's Iranian Shia empowerment. They will be pro-Trump because of him cracking down on that, and he can use that influence that he buys, that he wins, to then say to them, "Listen, don't do as much trading with Turkey. Don't have as close political links with Turkey uh, in return for my tough stance on the Iran deal." And that will isolate Erdogan, and Erdogan craves respect around the world. So if he senses isolation. He might back down and become more pro-American again. Now, you mentioned backing away from Kurdish support would would somehow um, help this situation, but do we really want to? I mean, is that good uh, policy? I thought the Kurds were really the only ones that are fighting ISIS over there. Well, no, I'm actually saying that we would double down on, on Kurdish support. We would increase that Kurdish support because at the moment we're limiting our support to the Kurds because we don't, because if we put more support there, it will upset the Turkish government because the Turkish government has a very uh, difficult uh, relationship with the various Kurdish groups in northern Iraq and Syria. So I'm saying Trump should say, listen, to Erdogan, President of Turkey, unless you start supporting the United States more, we're going to give the Kurds more arms, more equipment, and more support in terms of pushing for territorial sovereignty on Turkey's borders. And that will be uh, met with great alarm in Turkey and might cause an a, uh, amelioration of the uh, Turkish uh, concern uh, as, as we find it at the moment with their relationship evolving with Russia. 
Now, you did mention a bit about the challenges to Iran's nuclear deal cheating. Um, talk to us a little bit about how that plays into into Turkey. I mean, Turkey is pretty close to Iran, but but how how does Trump use that little piece to get Erdogan back in line here? Well, I, I think he uses it in, in, in the way I mentioned, in the sense that the Sunni monarchies... Um, in the Middle East with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, UAE, uh, Bahrain. These are nations that are very deeply skeptical of the Iran deal. They're very upset with President Obama because he agreed to that deal. If Trump were to back away from the deal or strengthen it, uh, they would become much more um, inclined to support Trump in other areas. And, And one key area would be to say to Erdogan, listen, if you piss us off, you're not just going to piss us off, you're also going to piss off our allies in the, in the vein of the Sunni monarchies. And so Erdogan would find himself isolated uh, with Putin as his only real friend. Uh, and Putin, I think even Erdogan knows, is never a real friend. He's a friend of convenience uh, that always acts uh, in, in the best pursuit of Russian interests, as he conceives them. I mean, functionally, they're not the best of Russian interests, but he's very aggressive. He doesn't care about allies. That seems pretty obvious, and I and I love your article because it just kind of lines this all out. It just kind of goes point by point what's going on in Turkey and and why why we've seen this shift and why we're feeling uneasy about the alliance that we've had with Turkey in the past not being exactly what it should be going into this. Uh, future uh, relationship now that Trump has. Um, do you do you feel just watching uh, like we all are? What Trump's doing is he making noises that right now would encourage Erdogan to rethink his um, his policies, or has Trump not been strong enough vocally to really cause that shift yet? I, I don't think Trump really knows what he's doing yet in foreign policy. Um, I think he's playing it by ear. Uh, I think he's kind of disinterested in it, quite frankly. Um, but we will see. I mean, I, there are opportunities for him to grasp. He has some good people around him. Jim Mattis at Defense, uh, Katie McFarland, Deputy um, National Security Advisor, as uh, two examples. These, these are people, Pompeo at CIA, these are people who, who get this kind of the, the game of power politics. Um, but the question is, does he listen to them? And really the question is, does he stop believing that Russia and him have similar interests? Putin is playing Trump at the moment um, because Putin's a KGB guy who never left the KGB. And, you know, Trump, Trump is making it easy for him. So the question becomes, what, what will he do? We don't know yet, but, you know, fingers crossed. Um, it, it's kind of hard to be worse on foreign policy than President Obama, though, so at least we can be optimistic. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tom, for for that assessment. I co-host Anna Little wants to ask you some questions, but we're up against a two-minute break. Can you stay with us through the break? Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much, Tom Rogan. We've been speaking to Tom about how Trump can stop Erdogan of Turkey from playing the United States. And we're coming to you live. From the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet, with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AM FM 24-7. We'll be right back after this short break with Sharon Angle, Anna Little, and our special guest, Tom Brogan. <laughs> Conservative.
Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is Pastor Christina Lamineer, chaplain for the INRA. And I'm her husband, J.D. Minear. We help co-host on the Concerted Commandos radio show, and we want to sincerely thank our listeners who turned out to vote in mass to elect Donald Trump, Governor Mike Pence, and conservative congressional candidates across our nation. Against incredible odds, you helped create the strongest GOP team to take the reins of power in Washington since the 1920s. General George Patton said, it's the unconquerable soul of man, not the nature of the weapon he uses, that ensures victory. We salute all of you for taking a stand for truth, freedom, and defending our constitutional form of government. Let us continue to pray for our nation and for God's blessings. May God save the United States of America. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back, listeners. Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Anna Little and Sharon Engel. If you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, CCRS Network and CCRShow.com, or at noon, RoarRadio.net, and at 11 p.m., HighPlainsDailyNews.com. And now you can listen to the conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. We are speaking this segment with Tom Rogan. He's discussing with us the relationship between Turkey and Russia and what Donald Trump needs to do about what's been going on out there in the Middle East and how he has to change his relationship or our relationship, uh, that is the United States' relationship with Turkey. Tom, thank you so much for waiting through that break. We do appreciate your time. Hello? Are you there, Tom? Hello, Tom. Yes, sorry, I missed your question, oh, sorry. Terrific. That's okay, great. Just was thanking you for waiting through that break. We do appreciate your time. Yeah, no, thank you, yeah. Okay, terrific. Well, I was listening to your interview with Sharon Angle prior to the break, and I've got a couple of questions. Of course, I'm Anna Little, the co-host on the show, and, you know, I'm very focused on what you've been saying about the dynamics there with Assad and Syria. Now, I think a lot of people view Putin's leadership in Syria as focusing on defeating ISIS, and they, they see it as action and leadership in the absence of action and leadership by the United States in the face of ISIS. Now, you're describing that as a very different dynamic. Would you go over that quickly for, for me and for the listeners so we can get it straight? Yeah, well, uh, yes, absolutely. The, the great lie of the Russian strategy in Syria is that it is focused on ISIS. It, it fundamentally is not. Um, you know, people should not take my word for that or anyone else's word for that. Um, but the Defense Department, in terms of the targeting, you can watch, you know, U.S. intelligence, the Pentagon, you know, foreign allies, watch what the Russian airplanes are bombing, and it isn't ISIS. And the reason they're not bombing ISIS is, quite frankly, uh, I think because where they see ISIS is still empowered... That gives them leverage to achieve what they most want, which is the world to agree that Assad is the lesser of two evils, and that the only way to defeat ISIS is to accept the Russian uh, argument that you have to keep Assad in power. And they're succeeding in that regard. I I think you're partly right, though, in saying that the Russians have been empowered by sort of taking the lead. 
um, states in the region, um, and even some European states, the French, uh, for example, um, have coalesced more around the Russians in the recent months, um, because in recent months the Russians uh, have been essentially showing that it's up to them what happens there. They have ceasefires, with, agreed with John Kerry, and then they break them. Um, and the, every time they do that, they weaken American credibility. So other actors that might support the United States decide, can't trust them, I mean, America is weak. So we might as well listen to the bully we know, which is Russia. Uh, and, and that is the dimension of the conflict, which I think is, is the concern that I have. Yeah, and I think with Trump coming in uh, mid-month in January, I, we're going to have a different leadership here in the White House and therefore a different leadership by the United States on the world stage. Trump's a doer. He's not a wait-and-see kind of guy. So there's going to be this dynamic between Russia and the United States in Syria, and it's already kind of been, uh, let's say, foreshadowed by communication from Putin toward Trump to say, hey, let's, let's join together in, in dealing with Syria. But what's concerning me is what you're pointing out. Apparently, there's this moderate Sunni rebellion, which almost sounds to me like freedom fighters of some sort. They seem to be anti-ISIS also, but they are also anti-Assad. And yet Russia is pro-Assad. And you seem to think that if Assad wins over these moderate Sunni rebellion folks, um, that we might be in worse shape than we are today. And I, maybe I'm oversimplifying. Tell us about that. That no, I, th I think you say that very effectively. I, the problem is it, it, you're dealing in a world of bad situations. And, and I think a lot of people are very skeptical of the Middle East. They hear someone saying, OK, we should do a bit more. We have to be skeptical. Putin's the appeal is that he seems to offer the easy example, right? America should just join with him and destroy ISIS. The problem is if you allow the moderate rebellion to collapse, and some elements are more moderate than others. There are some extreme elements there. But if you allow that to collapse, those fighters aren't just going to disappear or die. Uh, they're going to join other groups which are still fighting. And ISIS and another group, Jabhat Fatah al-Sham, which is an al-Qaeda syndicate, are the other two major groups. So if Assad wins, ISIS also wins because the recruits go to him, the resources go to him, the support from the Sunni monarchies, for example, Saudi Arabia, very oil-rich, goes to those groups, ISIS, al-Qaeda. They've done it before, they'll do it again. And if we're concerned in the West about people returning to the West, who are ISIS terrorists, about the ideology that threatens our public events, and then, you know, Assad's victory uh, is the best way to ensure that that threat will continue to grow. Uh, because Assad ultimately is what motivates everyone, whether they be an extremist or a moderate, to keep fighting. Because he has killed hundreds of thousands of Sunnis, and whether you're an ISIS fighter or a moderate fighter, uh, for, for example, you know, it could be you know, the Kurdish elements, the YPG, uh, it could be the Syrian Defense Forces in alignment of rebels, and it doesn't matter. Uh, it simply matters that Assad is still in that position of power. Uh, so, you know, you, unless you deal with that, you're not dealing with the issue. Well, so now Putin obviously sees Trump as very different than Obama, and he's anticipating Trump coming into office communicating with him, mentioning Syria. Um, Trump, if I'm looking at Trump and Putin together, my money's on Trump. I mean, the man, uh, if he's well-educated on a topic, can certainly provide very strong leadership. And Putin obviously doesn't come from the same uh, economic strength that the United States of America does. So is it possible, I guess is my question, that with Trump's leadership and Putin already respecting that he's going to have to deal with Trump, can we turn this in a direction that does actually address terrorism and ISIS on the world stage? And would we be able to, therefore, as Russia and the United States working together against terrorism, somehow stabilize the Middle East and perhaps, you know, deal with these burnings and beheadings that infuriate me? I mean, here we are, a, a civilized globe, and we can't seem to eradicate that for whatever reason. I, you know, but uh, do you think Trump's leadership could do the trick? It can, to some degree. And the question is, does he listen to his intelligence briefers? Um, does he listen to people around him who are showing that the Russians are trying to play you? Um, and does he uh, do, for example, what he did, I think, very correctly about a week ago when the Russians said they were going to improve their nuclear forces, he tweeted out, we're going to do the same. That was good. 
but the liberals said that was bad. They were wrong. It was good because you've got to challenge the Russians eyeball to eyeball. They respect pure power. Um, that is what you know. Tear down this wall, Truman. That this is what they value is pure power politics, and and Trump functionally could be very good at that. Um, and his erratic behavior, in some sense, could be good because it would throw the Russians off balance. But the way to deal with these issues ultimately is to accept that the Russians will have influence. I think only the most hawkish people would say you push the Russians out. I think that's too risky. Um, well, or I don't think you can costly. push them off the world. But, 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 no, if, but if you put more pressure on them, for example, in Syria, uh, you can, by providing more support to rebels who are fighting Assad, you can say to the Russians, hey, here's a deal. You can keep your bases in, uh, on the uh, western coast of Syria. You can have a say in the future government, but Assad has to go, and the Sunni population has to have empowerment. And if the Russians were pushed, I think that's a deal that they would, you know, that they wouldn't like it, but they would cut it. And, and Trump could cut that. The question is, does he do that, or does he simply say, Putin likes me, so I like him, and I'm going to keep sucking up to him? Well, I think we better get to talking to Trump. Now, Tom Rogan, our time is gone. So quickly tell our listeners where they can follow you and stay on top of this issue and other issues that you're working on. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my homepage is www.tomroganthinks.com, and then my, um, you know, I, make, I, tweet, I tweet at Tom R. Tweets, and uh, yeah, all my links are at both of those. Uh, right for National Review and Opportunity Lives on domestic policy, but yeah, thank you for having me on. Well, we deeply appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you for spending time with us. Oh, and I, I would add one final point. As much as I have a British accent, I'm, an, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I'm not one of those... Here's Morgan people who tells Americans what to do uh, with their country. I am one of you. Well, Tom, thank you for that. And we hope that you'll come back and visit us soon as a conservative commando. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, Sharon, time flies and we're having fun. We are plumb out of time. Do you have any final words as we close out the show? Well, and as we close out 2016, I just want to wish all of our listeners uh, um, most prosperous 2017, and that God will bless them rich, richly. Ditto from me, and with that, as our producer says, we gotta run, we gotta go. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you next year on the radio. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another... You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of...